I think it's more than one year since the last time we did a Q&A video. So, without further ado, let's go! John would like to know, is it time to revise speed, roll rates and angle of attack? This question comes in the context of the new releases of INAF and the answer is that as long as you are not migrating from something as ancient as INAF 3, you should be fine. INAF 5, INAF 6 and the upcoming INAF 7 will not change much in terms of the PID controller, rates and angle of attack. So, if your bird is flying just fine, just migrate all the settings over. It will be fine. However, if you have some time, my advice is actually to start setup from scratch and do the auto-tune like always. Daniel Dubowski asks, will I add a support for VTOL to INAV? And the answer that, well, I will not add the support to VTOL to INAV, but someone else will. There is right now an experimental build of the INAV 7 with the VTOL support, and if everything will go according to plan, we gonna have the VTOL support together with the official release of INAV 7. And that is a bloody good news. Henik Kolstad would like to know, is there a way to specify a plane's cruise power in amps instead of the microseconds? And the answer is that unfortunately in INAF right now the cruise throttle has to be specified as just a throttle position. You cannot just enter yet anywhere in the setting during the cruise use max for amps. Unfortunately this is not yet possible, however we are of course not excluding that such a functionality will happen later. Or not. We don't know yet. The Catfather01 asks, how can I protect DJI Air unit from interference from brushed motors? A Faraday cage, an option? Much appreciated. Unfortunately, I have a kind of bad news for you because the half of the problem with the interference from the motor is not actually transferred through the radio waves. It's just the crap that goes into the wires, gets through the MOSFETs, ESCs through your power section to your electronic and unfortunately to your VTX and other radio sensitive equipment. On top of that the DJI Air unit is already inside of the Faraday cage so you cannot really shield it better. The only practical option I see is to put additional LC filter like a choke and the capacitor on the power lines that you use to power your DGA Air unit. A link to a place when you can learn more about the LC filter is in the description of this video. Eduardo Aranda would like to know if I think that the Cadix Walksnail is the best FPV system. And the answer is well complicated. I do think that it's a very valid competition to the DJI FPV system. It has some pros, it has some cons and overall I think if I would be starting my FPV adventure at the moment I would actually go with the walk snail. I'm not saying it's the best, but there are cases when it just wins with what DJI offers. Not always, not for everyone, but if you go with the walk snail, you will rather not be really disappointed. Ian FPV would like to know about the past and the future of the INAF project. Ian, on the topic of the past, I think I already recorded a video or two on the topic, but if we are talking about the future of the project, I really honestly have absolutely nothing to tell you yet. I would like everyone to remember that this is a hobby open source project. We are not working according to any schedule, we are not paid for what we do, we are just doing stuff we like to do whenever we like it to do or not. However, I do have to tell you if that the features that are in development for the INAF 7 will go live, 
Mm, mm, mm. That will be one very interesting release. And the second part of the Ian's questions is the future of the F411s and F722s. I have something of a bad news for you. Most probably INAF7 will be the last release for the F411s. In case of the F722s, they still might be with us for a while. However, they will most probably not get all the very interesting features that might go with the INAV7. Basic support and function, yes. Shiny new stuff, well, most probably not really. Yo, man, remember to hit the like button and subscribe. After all, it helps with engagement rate. JPQQ2KN has Kaizen goggles, which have a lot of modes for the receiver. Div, Mix1, Mix2, Mix3. And he would like to know which one of the modes he should actually use. Most probably, you should go with the Mix3, because the Mix modes is the modes when both inputs are mixed together, just like the Immersion RC rapid fire is doing, while the div mode is the standard diversity where the receiver switches between the stronger signal at the moment. So my advice is start with Mix3 and if you will encounter no problem, stay with Mix3. If you will have some kinds of the problem, switch from Mix1 to Mix2, then to Mix1 and then finally go with Div. But most probably Mix3 will work just the best. Adrian FPV asks why the DJI FPV system with air units or vistas just hard stops at approximately 13 kilometers. And the reason is actually quite simple. The DJI uses a bidirectional protocol, that means the data flows both from your goggles to your transmitter and from the transmitter to the goggles. And goggles wait only a limited amount of time for the reply from the transmitter. If the reply does not come in the defined amount of time, and we do know that the radio waves and the light in general travels only 300,000 kilometers per second, then just the goggles assume that the transmitter is out of range and the same the transmission. If you are closer than the limit, the frame just have enough of time to go back to the goggles and say the goggles, yeah, we are working, everything is fine, but if the distance is just greater than the limit, well, we are out of the window of opportunity, goggles say, well, screw you, I'm not displaying anything, and this is our result. And by the way, having a bidirectional transmission actually has some perks. On the other hand, the 13 kilometers is well rather far and majority of the users never really notice. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, this was the FPV University. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!